Thank you. Uh, not bad, Ian. Um, Think House is a community workspace with 21st century toys. The RepRap Perusa over there is one of them. We're having a few more. We have a laser cutter. Um, we end up with some nice soldering equipment and so forth, electronics equipment. But it's a community workshop for people to be able to play with, do whatever they want. Um, it's about three years old, actually almost four years old now. Uh, started first, our first location was Niagara on land, roughly Wentworth and Burlington. Had a nice 2300 square foot area, industrial area, but right now we are doing smaller projects. Um, 3D printing is essentially an area of, ra of um, rapid prototyping. The idea is you can come along and produce things very quickly, tinker with them, design them. If they work, you can look at doing larger productions of it. If they don't, you just throw it away, modify the design to make it fit. Uh, this particular one is deposited filament. There is a few other areas uh, of it. Uh, laser sintering for met or metal sintering is one that I want to play with. Um, but yes, this machine here is about seven or eight hundred dollars for that machine today. Commercial machines that do about the same type of thing are in the range of twenty-five grand or higher. Um, they do produce a better quality things, but not significantly. The really nice thing about something like this is it's completely open source. The design is completely available. It's always being tinkered with. It's, there's a constant evolution, and there's all kinds of people who come along with modifications to make it better. There's a couple of pieces over there, of a few pieces that have been modified. Um, it, two years ago when it started to get into the, the maker and the hacker community with 3D printing, the common thing for everybody to do was to make another one. Uh, right now I'm doing a piece, it's called The Bust of Paris. I forget the name of the Italian artist who carved it in marble. Uh, for Napoleon, but um, the original is in the Art Institute of Chicago and is 66 centimeters high. This piece, when it's finished, is only going to be 72 millimeters, so a little bit better than 10% of the size, but I get to do it in plastic, and I can do it all kinds of times. I can't carve marble, certainly not with the precision that I can with that. Uh, you're starting to get even in the consumer 3D printing where the quality is getting high enough that the file that you're using is a determining factor in how good it is. That is, the file is created on a computer. This one is being run by a computer, fed uh, what's called G code, which is just a, a standard CNC. Uh, way of communicating with the machine, telling it where to go. You, that machine has been used to produce a replacement parts for various things in, in, for people. Um, a button for a doorbell. It's been used to replace a knob on a um, range hood. So th there's all kinds of things. One of the people I know commented that his wife was using their weed whacker and broke the bottom part of it. Well, the replacement for that is a new weed whacker. Coming along with something along that line, you can now come along, design a new piece, or take the, the original piece, um, strengthen it where it's required, print a new part, and rather than replacing an entire machine, I can now do replacement parts. Uh, it's an interesting area to play with. The, the thing I keep looking at with it is not what am I going to do with it, more it's okay, what am I going to do first? Because I have a list of a, 
a mile long with that and with a few of the other pieces of equipment in the hackers in Think House. And yeah, it's Think House has its open houses on Tuesday nights, 25 Dundurn Street North. Come by and drop it. by and say hello. Get to see, get to play with the, to come up with the machines, and see what we have to offer. And yeah, it's a chance to, it's a chance to play.